Hello, everyone. Ladislas Maurice from the wanderinginvestor.com. So today we'll be discussing breaking news in the citizenship by investment space together with Laszlo, who's actually right now in Grenada, one of the Caribbean countries that sells citizenships. Laszlo, how are you? Good, good. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, the sun already went down. I was unable to make a picture of what beautiful place it is, by the way, outside of any kind of business, but this is really beautiful. Yeah, and I'm here in Riyadh, actually, one of the one of the biggest markets for the, the CBI industry. So look, there have been big announcements. There is now apparently going to be a floor, a minimum floor of $200,000 for four out of the five Caribbean countries that sell their citizenships. So Laszlo, can you explain, you know, why is this happening and what exactly is being put in place right now in which countries? Because not all of them are are participating in this. Um, very simply, the European Union doesn't like the citizenship programs and doesn't like that at the discounted prices, nearly everybody can get it, irrespective of their criminal background and so on and so on, because it's a good money for the countries. So they do not like those countries to, to forget to do the proper due diligence. And therefore, they were basically threatening these countries that, yes, if, if you do not behave, there are certain conditions they laid out in January, then you would lose your Schengen visa-free travel, which is a big problem, because then with Schengen, probably the United Kingdom would also decide, okay, let's revoke the city, let's revoke the visa-free travel. And then they sent a warning. They had a meeting in January, as far as I remember. They sent a warning uh, nine days ago, eight days ago, and then they would like to proceed with the, with the decision of, of making a choice for those countries. And one of the conditions for the acceptance of the citizenship programs or keeping the approval for visa-free travel was the fact that the amounts charged by these countries are too low. They do not want cheap people. They want higher, more affluent people for the citizenship programs, the EU. And therefore, then the four, Car four Caribbean countries, which is Antigua, Dominica, Grenada, and St. Kitts, signed a memorandum of agreement for the EU that, yes, from the 1st of July, they would increase the necessary donation to a minimum of 200,000 US dollars. This is what they announced yesterday or the day before yesterday. I do not even remember. So for St. Kitts and Nevis, it doesn't make too much of a difference because they're already at $250,000. Uh, but for the other countries, it makes quite a bit of a difference. Can you elaborate on the on the difference right now? Yes, uh, the uh, Antigua and uh, and Dominica stands now at a hundred thousand US dollars. I understand there are due diligence fees and others, but the basic donation for a single applicant is a hundred thousand US dollars. That would be that is the amount which would be increased as a minimum of two hundred thousand. Grenada is hundred and fifty thousand, so that is also expected to be uh, two hundred, and it is also possible that Grenada, and this is what I have to investigate, one of the reasons why I came, of how good boy Grenada would like to be, and maybe increase it more than to the minimum two hundred thousand to say that Grenada is better than the three others, and therefore raising to the Saint Kitts level. We do not know, but then it is a very simple thing. The Memorandum was signed by the prime ministers of those four countries. So at the end, we could really make we could really make sure that that this is what would happen. There is no doubt in me that that would happen from the first of July. Cool. So in many ways, a lot of people were scared that visa-free travel would be removed uh, from these Caribbean countries. But I guess that with them complying, that's less of a risk. What What are your thoughts? Initially. Um, the Caribbean countries obviously fought with the EU, but during this January meeting, the EU delegation said they understand the concept and they understand how important it is to the uh, to the economy of these small countries. And when I heard that, I said, yes, the EU wants to force them to make changes, but they understand that, yes, this is what is going on and they accept it. This is diplomatically what they actually said. Okay. So do people still have time to apply before the end of June and get the old price? Yes, at the old price, Sandkit showed that when they changed the system and they increased it and they doubled the necessary amount just the next day, then they, they uh, had a rule, and this applies for the same Caribbean, that if you apply and you file your application, the old prices would be in force, not the new ones. Of course, there would be uh, quite a lot of work to gather the necessary paperwork, but it can be done in three months' time. So all in all, that is why there is a window. And then when you are talking about 100,000, saving 100,000 US dollars, if you want to do it, then I think that is a 
that is the time to do it now. I mean, I can go back and forth, but this is now the time to do it. It will be double the amount. And therefore, if you want to do it, then then do it for a cheaper price. That's all. Yeah. Okay. So if people want to do it, it's now, it's not later. Okay. Clear. Um, what about the, the timelines? Because typically when you look online, people are going around parroting six, seven months, et cetera. I just, I'm very doubtful of these timelines. What, what do you think people should, should expect to wait to get their, uh, to get their citizenship? Cause there's going to be a flood of applications. Look I have to agree with you in any governmental organization, not in just these countries, but basically anywhere in the world, they are used to have a certain level of work, a certain level of application, a certain number of cases which they can have, they can hold. Now, if what I count would happen is that many, many people, the, the demand would increase just like that. There is no organization which would be able to handle it based on the old time frame. And uh, Maybe it's good, maybe it's not, but I'm just really describing what I think would happen is that nine months, 12 months would be the processing time because then the numbers would be so high that they do, they are not prepared for this. And in fact, they are forced by the EU to do that. So how can you prepare yourself? And that is why deadlines now, I think if anybody gives an indication of the deadlines, uh, would be just talking about rubbish because then I think nobody at all knows how much time it would take. One uh, one year is I think is acceptable because when Grenada was overloaded with the Russian applications last March, when St. Kitts was overloaded with the applications at the end of June, then it took them uh, nine months, ten months to process the applications. This is what I see that it would be definitely not below six months, but rather we would communicate to our clients that it is rather a year or maybe I cannot make any kind of guarantees that the, the application, if everything is in order, would be accepted. And the old price would be the payable one, even if it's one year later. Okay. So, you know, wait an extra four months and save $100,000. All right. Sounds uh, <laughs> sounds uh, worth it for most people. I think that's, that's not a bad deal. Yeah. Whatever interest rate you are, so you are, you are looking at. And you have to pay the, uh, the amount, by the way, when your citizenship application is approved, meaning that the money still is generating something for you until the government is accepting your, your application and the money is due. Okay, cool. Interesting. I didn't know this. Um, what about St. Lucia? Because St. Lucia didn't sign up to this. So what's up with them? St. Lucia decided not to sign this agreement. They have an ongoing uh, big business with property developers, especially a Chinese company. We consider professional as all the fraudulent transactions, but it can be cheaper than a donation. So all in all, it is possible to get uh, St. Lucia, but because St. Lucia decided not to agree with the conditions, then they would be the first, in my opinion, who could lose their Schengen visa free travel because the EU wants to make an example of them. So all in all, I would suggest people do not touch St. Lucia. It looks nice now. It looks cheaper now. Forget it. Try to find the other four countries, one which would be good for you. Okay, cool. So right now, uh, with the discounts, essentially go for the other countries later on. If you don't care about EU, St. Lucia donation could be could be an option. Okay, clear. Fantastic. Great. Laszlo, thank you very much. So look, everyone, if you're interested in going ahead with one of these um, citizenships, if you're not too sure which one to go for, because they all have their own little subtleties, feel free to get in touch with Laszlo. He's been in this game for three decades. Um, so yeah, Laszlo's been around. Um, there is his contact information below. Laszlo, thank you so much. Eh? It was a pleasure. Thank you. Make sure to download my free ebook, 12 Mistakes to Avoid When Investing in International Real Estate, which you can find on my website, link below. And feel free to follow me on Instagram at The Wandering Investor. I look forward to hearing from you.